Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, helping you to find jargon-free information before choosing a professional to help solve your problems and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Divorce Conversation. And during this segment of the show, I have divorce mediator and collaborative divorce attorney, Kerry Jacobson, who is the owner of Jacobson Family Law in Columbia, Maryland. Now, Kerry will be talking to you today about a very interesting topic. You see, she's taken the time out of her busy day to come and talk to us about keeping the drama out of divorce. Now, I can't wait to just dig into this some more with Kerry. So, If you're out there and you happen to be seeking jargon free information before, yeah, before taking on the services of a divorce professional, then you may want to stop what you're doing, find a quiet spot where you're not going to be disturbed and listen in to what Carrie has to share with you today. So with that said, let's not keep her waiting a moment longer. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You are so welcome. So, Kerry, first of all, I just want to get the legal matters out of the way. It goes without saying that anything you share with us today is not any form of legal or therapeutic advice or assistance. It's purely for the purpose of sharing information. Now, could you just please take a moment to expand on that in your own words so we're absolutely clear about what we're doing today? Absolutely. So the information that I will be discussing today really is for education purposes, information purposes, and not specific legal advice on any one particular situation. Perfect. Thank you for that, Kerry. So briefly, in your own words, describe your company, the people who you serve, yeah, and the kinds of situations that they find themselves in when they come to you for your help. So we are a family law practice and mediation practice. We are completely virtual. Um, So we service clients throughout the um, DC, Maryland and Virginia area. And we help divorcing couples obtain an amicable divorce without the drama of court intervention so that they can start a new chapter in their lives as happier and more effective co-parents without the high cost and stress of litigation. We also work with clients who may be getting looking to get married um, and want to create a prenuptial agreement so that they can you know, predetermine how their assets would be divided in the unlikely event of a divorce or death in the future. Um, so our practice really is um, focused on helping individuals and couples find resolutions outside of the court process. So, Kerry, before you came onto the show, before you were invited, we obviously do our research and we've seen that you are a, I would say, a trustworthy educator and advocate for your client's success. Now, over the uh, over the years or throughout the years that you've been out there helping your clients, what's one of the most common misconceptions that you come across surrounding your industry? Sure. So there's many misconceptions really (laughs) to divorce (laughs) and custody. Um, But I would say that one of the most common misconceptions is that people believe they have to go to court to obtain a resolution to their divorce or custody matter. And this is most commonly because, you know, people know someone or have a friend or someone who they've heard of that has had a terrible divorce or custody battle, but they rarely hear from those friends and family where they're, you know, the divorce goes well, right? We hear the horror stories, but we not, don't necessarily hear the situations where things go well and when they're amicable. Um, but really, couples are able to reach an amicable agreement concerning their divorce or custody matters without having to, you know, involve the court and sometimes really can do so with limited legal intervention, um, especially if they participate in mediation. So we're talking about keeping the drama out of divorce today. That's our main topic. So with that in mind then, Kerry, how do people actually benefit from keeping the drama out of divorce? I mean, it sounds kind of self-explanatory, but please expand on that in your own words for us. 
Mediation is a wonderful alternative for couples to resolve their differences where they may have, have come to an agreement without court intervention. Mediation specifically um, and other out-of-court resolutions can save couples tens of thousands of dollars in attorney fees, as well as time that most, because most litigated cases these days, now that, you know, after the uh, COVID pandemic that has delayed court matters and the like, it's now taking two years or more if a case goes all the way through litigation and a judge has to make a decision. And really, people who are trying to resolve these matters quickly can do so in a matter of months. It's clear that you provide mediation services, but you're also a divorce attorney. Now, when I look at that, there's kind of a, yeah, there's a, there's an A and a B thing going on here. Divorce attorney, mediation, there's two different kinds of services. Why mediation rather than litigation? We choose to work with couples who want to stay out of court because we truly believe and have experienced that litigation is harmful to families in most situations. We recognize that there are scenarios where litigation is you know, a necessary evil um, and may be a situation where some particular parties are not able to avoid. But the vast majority of divorcing couples really can reach resolutions outside of court. And we believe and experience has shown us that couples are able to reach agreements and mediation. Their agreements last longer because they are the ones invested in the resolution. Um, and many people prefer mediation over selecting an attorney to advocate on their behalf because honestly, a lot of times couples or individuals are worried that hiring an attorney is actually going to complicate the matter um, and make it more expensive than it otherwise needs to be. So, Terry, if mediation can help to keep the drama out of divorce, what kind of fears do people have around that? So, I think most common for people to fear that they're, like I said, their divorce is going to be expensive, it's going to be complicated, and it's going to take a long time. And because they, again, have heard those worst case scenarios of how awful it can be. But really, if someone's looking for an amicable resolution, and they do want to keep the drama out of divorce, they can seek professionals such as mediators, and other you know, attorneys and collaborative attorneys that are not motivated to prolong the divorce process and really instead are motivated to efficiently and effectively helping them reach an amicable resolution. So because we don't do litigation in our practice, we have no incentive to drag the, the mediation process out longer than it needs to you know, we are really incentivized by helping couples resolve their differences quickly and without the drama that's related to the litigation. Mm. So if keeping the drama out of divorce is beneficial to me, and I'm obviously speaking on behalf of the listener who's tuning in right now, what are some of the common mistakes or even pitfalls that one should avoid? And what does one need to do to avoid those mistakes or pitfalls? Yes. So I think one common pitfall people make when going through the divorce process is many people choose litigation first because they don't necessarily think that their spouse will be able to or receptive to participate in mediation or receptive to participate in negotiations. In many instances, by initiating litigation first, they're actually making it more difficult to reach an amicable resolution. And this is because when you file pleadings in litigation, they're often inflammatory. You know, you're filing something talking about how awful the other person is and all the other things that they have done wrong. And once that person, your spouse, receives those pleadings, they're really now focused on all the bad things you've said about them to the court and everyone else who may have read them instead of really focusing on how to find a resolution to the issues at hand. And this can make the process a lot more stressful 
It can take more time to reach a resolution and it can actually be much more costly than if you chose to engage in out of court settlement discussions before filing litigation. So how does your service help them to avoid that pitfall then, Kerry? So we believe that it's best for people to initiate those out of court conversations first. And even if a party can't come to a full agreement, I feel like many times they can at least narrow the issues that they disagree on. So they may agree on, you know, issues related to custody, or they may agree on some of the issues related to the property division, and maybe they still have some disagreements. But what they've done in that scenario is they've reduced what needs to be focused on in litigation and will reduce the amount of time and expense associated with having to explore all of the issues related to the points where they have actually reached an agreement. So in terms of some of the things which may hold people back from working with a professional like yourself, could you please share you know, two or three obstacles which fall into that category? Yes, I think one obstacle that they have is that they think that since they're, you know, maybe they come into this process and they and their spouse agree on many of the terms, they actually think that they can do the agreement themselves. And so, you know, everything's amicable. And so they want to save money and do the agreement on their own. Unfortunately, this often backfires because one, they may not know what needs to be included in the agreement to prevent future disputes or enforcement. Two, they may actually be setting themselves up for failure. Um, and three, it oftentimes makes modifying custodial arrangements more challenging in the future. So in terms of how you've actually helped somebody to yeah, to overcome those obstacles that you just shared with us, Kerry, could you just please share with us an example of how you've been able to do that? Many of our clients who go through mediation ultimately tell us how simple they found the process to be. Um, we work with many couples who may already have an agreement. And so in those scenarios, we are simply guiding them through to ensure that the agreement that they've reached is durable to prevent them from you know, ending up in court in the future. We also will draft the document that is necessary to file with the court to finalize their divorce. And there are some scenarios where couples may need a bit more guidance and assistance with coming up with solutions that will work with both parties. And in those situations, we offer suggestions or direct them to other professionals so that they can obtain information that they may need before they are able to finalize an agreement. And oftentimes, our clients are able to finalize an agreement in as few as one or two mediation sessions. So we really save them a lot of time in the overall process. So, Kerry, if children are involved in the divorce process and there's lots of drama surrounding that in your experience what kind of impact does having all that drama within the divorce process have on the children um, that you'd like to share with the listener right now because there may be someone who's tuning in right now and they may have every valid reason to be at yeah in conflict with their partner they may have valid reasons for that. However, there are children involved and maybe the children are getting caught up in the middle. Um, this is something, a topic that lies very close to my heart. As I, I was a child of divorce myself. And it's one of the reasons why I started this Let's Talk, Let's Talk Divorce series. Now, I would love to hear from your perspective as an expert, what kind of impact you have seen that having this animosity surrounding a child or children, what kind of impact that has and what you feel um, or how you feel parents or carers, people who have children, should act around their children. This is a very important topic for me as well. Um, I, too, am a product of my parents' divorce. Um, and in addition to the work that we do 
um, in assisting parents through mediation. I also am sometimes appointed by the court to represent um, children in custody related matters when their parents can't come to an agreement. Maryland, we call that a best interest attorney. I know many other states may call that a guardian ad litem, but we call it a best interest attorney. And really what I would say is that, you know, there's a plethora of research out there that really does show that the conflict between the parents is what impacts the children most negatively overall. It's not the schedule that the parties, you know, the parents agree to. It's not how much time. It's not the differences in parenting styles, um, that sort of thing. It really is how much conflict the child observes and is exposed to between the parents. And that can have absolutely long lasting impact on children after the divorce is over, after even, you know, into their adulthood. And so what I truly believe is that if parents really do have a focus on what is in their children's best interest, it is to minimize the conflict between them in any way that they can. Um, if they can, if they can minimize it by reaching a resolution outside of court, that is absolutely ideal. Um, and if it's not, it's getting the professional services that they need to minimize it, whether that is a individual therapist themselves, if it's a divorce coach, whether it's a parent coordinator, you know, um, and ultimately potentially a therapist for the child so that they have a safe place to process all of their emotions related to the divorce and potential conflict between the parents. So, Terry, when you're working um, with these parents and, and their children, have you ever come across a case where the parents are 100% sure that even though they're at loggerheads with each other, even though there's conflict with each other, they never do it in front of the children and the children mm -hmm. are not aware of that. However, when you speak with a child, the child tells a completely different story that they pick up on every nuance. Do you, do you ever come across that? Unfortunately, it is very common. Mm -hmm. um, parents believe that just because they didn't directly say something while the child was present, that, that you know, the child doesn't know what's going on. Um, children are very resourceful and mm -hmm. they are all knowing, you know, mm -hmm. especially when you don't think they're listening. Um, they definitely have their ears tuned in. I, I can say for myself, I have two young children, and every time I try to have a conversation without them listening, they are completely, what are you talking about? Who are you talking about? You know, right, all of those right. types of things. And mm -hmm. so they really do have, are, they're tuned in. And they also, you know, they with the digital world that we're in, they can see text messages, they can see, you know, videos or calls and all of those types of things. They know a lot more than we ever give them credit for. What's what's the advice? What's the what's the tip? What's the insight for parents who feel they, yeah, they can hide their um, indifferences from their children? What, what would you like to say to them? I would say that if you are that angry with your ex or soon to be ex, it or, you know, also grieving the end of your marriage um, and or relationship, I truly think it is so important to get the professional help that you need to process those feelings so that they don't overrun and impact how, how you are handling things with your child. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is divorce mediator and collaborative divorce attorney, Kerry Jacobson, who up until this point has been talking about the topic of keeping the drama out of divorce. However, Kerry, I think now is the right time for us to, yeah, let's just change gears and talk a little bit about you. Please tell us a little bit about your backstory. I mean, what was it that led you to 
yeah, to do what you do today. I mean, nobody goes to bed one night and then wakes up in the morning and, and ta-da, I think I'm going to be a divorce attorney or I'm going to be a divorce mediator. You know, there's, there's always a, a, yeah, a long meandering path to where one finds themselves today. So please go ahead, share, share us a little bit about your backstory. Well, I would absolutely say that mine was pretty meandering to get to where that I am. <laughs> yeah, that's um, usually the I case. Have, yeah. I <laughs> have actually known that I was an attorney of some sort or another since at, at, at least the eighth grade. Um, and, you know, yeah, the, the type of attorney has changed over the years, but I knew an attorney was the, the right profession for me. Um, and as far as a mediator, I've actually been doing that for a long time too. I've been, I was a, a peer mediator all the way back in high school. Um, you know, so when, when kids would get into arguments and that sort of thing, I would go in and assist in trying to help resolve those. So I did peer mediation both in high school and college and then took um, you know, the certification for mediation related to divorce and custody while I was in law school. So I've been doing it for a very long time. And Getting into family law really was just a natural progression. My undergraduate degree is in sociology with a minor in psychology, and family law really just resonated with me. Again, I mentioned before that I am also a, uh, my parents divorced when I was a child, so I was familiar with, you know, what that entailed, and I wanted to be able to give back and help others find a better way to divorce that doesn't have a negative impact on kids into their future. So if you imagine it's any, any day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, let's say it's 5 a.m. in the morning, your alarm clock goes off, you wake up totally alarmed, <laughs> um, and you have a full day's work ahead of you serving your clients. How does Carrie Jacobson feel on a morning like that? I generally feel motivated. Um, most, I am fortunate because of the work that I do. Most of the clients that we service are the the, the side of the the divorce industry that most people don't necessarily get to entail, and or experience, I should say. So many times, couples really are coming, and even though they are deciding to, you know, end their relationship they truly do care for the other individual. And many times they are trying to find resolutions to make sure that that other spouse um, who, you know, may be the mother or father of their children are going to be in a better position when this is all over. You know, they want to make sure that they are financially secure. They want to make sure that they have the resources necessary in order to provide for the kids. And so many times I get to see couples who are going over and beyond what might be required of them to make sure that they are protecting the other person on the other side. So Kerry, when you're able to provide that transformation, because essentially that's what you do, people come to you in scenario A and they're wanting to get to situation B and you're the conduit that creates that transformation. When you're able to do that, um, what does that give you? It's an absolutely wonderful feeling. Um, you know, overall, it is a feeling of satisfaction that I have been able to help a family transition to, you know, that next chapter and know that they are going to be truly happier and better co-parents after it's all said and done. So if there is somebody out there right now and they are evaluating a professional in your field, what should they be looking for, Kerry? I think it's important to look for someone who has experience in family law um, and in mediation. And I think it's important to really look for someone who has your best interest at the forefront, not their own best interest. Um, you know, making sure that they align with your goals. So if your goal is to amicably resolve your 
divorce without, you know, without the drama, then don't choose the person who has the reputation for being a pit bull because that's not going to align with your goals. You know something, Kerry, you have done such a great job today. I'm, I'm so impressed that I think I'm going to file for divorce just so that I can be your client. How does that sound? Well, hopefully you're not doing it just for that. <laughs> but if you need our services and you happen to be in this area, then we would be happy to help. I, I made sure my wife was downstairs when I said that, by the way. <laughs> Okay, we are coming towards the end of the show, and I, I just really feel like we're beginning to scrape the, the tip of the iceberg. However, we are running out of time. So, Kerry, um, how can the listener actually connect with you? One, and what's even more important is what happens when they do reach out to you. And I say even more important because it's okay giving you contact details, but people want to know what's going to happen beyond that. You know, are you going to? Take a Fred Flintstone club out and drag them to the back of the office and, you know, beat them over the head, take all their money away. What, what's going to happen? Explain the process. Explain how people can get hold of you. Please go ahead. Sure. So as you mentioned, our website is www.jacobsonfamilylaw.com. And I'm sure that will be in the show notes. And we have a phone number as well. Um, and that is 443-741-1147. And the initial step is to schedule a consultation. If you are a couple that is interested in mediation, then we can schedule a consultation with both of you together and really discuss what the mediation process entails, answer questions about the process, and discuss what the next steps will look like. If you're an individual that's looking for representation so that we can help negotiate the terms of a, an agreement, either with your spouse or their attorney. We also do an initial consultation so that we can really hone in on what your goals are and discuss how we can help you accomplish those goals. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today. You have been listening to divorce mediator and collaborative divorce attorney, Kerry Jacobson. Thank you so much for sharing so generously with us today, Kerry. You have certainly demonstrated that you are a true educator and advocate for your client's success. So thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You are so welcome, my dear. And you know something, Kerry, I'd also just like to take a moment to say a big thank you to our listeners, because yes, without you, our listener, we wouldn't have anybody to speak to. We'd be sat here twiddling our little thumbs. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day and for joining us on what can only be described as an insightful and informative conversation with one of the leading divorce mediators and collaborative divorce attorneys in Columbia, Maryland today. Her name again is Carrie Jacobson. So if keeping the drama out of divorce is important to you, be sure to check out her contact details because if there's one thing I'm sure of after listening to Kerry today, it's that your case will be in trustworthy hands and most importantly, a safe, sound and secure place to get started. So that's it. Again, I'm Stuart Andrew Alexander and we'll be back shortly with some more leading divorce professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Divorce Conversations. So until then, take care. Have a great day and always remember, love your children more than you hate each other. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.